talking with the experts. So what we're doing is we're working on the beingness of who we are. And it's the feel, just like the feel you put in your car to drive your car. If you don't put the right fuel in your car, your car's not going to go very far. That's like your thought. So if that feel, that energy isn't in alignment with the car, car breaks down. Mm -hmm. But if you put the right gas in and then you drive the car, it can go for miles and miles. And that's all we're doing is we're putting the right fuel in the subconscious. See, we're meant to live in a state of happiness, abundance, and prosperity, um, kindness, generosity, goodness. We're not meant to live in a state of stress, worry, pressure, anxiety um, at all. That's not who we are. That's not our natural beingness, but we get stuck there. And a part of it is that collective consciousness too. Mm. Talking with the experts. Hello, my name's Rose Davidson from rosedavidson.com. Welcome to Talking with the Experts. And Talking with the Experts is about all things business by business owners for business owners. And you can find it on all good podcasting streaming platforms and on YouTube. And today it's my very great pleasure to introduce you to Donna Campbell. And Donna is a professional speaker, international healer and bestseller author. And she share, is going to share some techniques with us today. She's known as the Mind Whisperer, and she combines her past knowledge, wisdom, and experience to assist others in creating and restoring a life of happiness, prosperity, and love. Donna has over 25 years combined experience um, in all of these techniques. And as a former financial advisor, her book, Financially Fit, is a number one Amazon international bestseller, bringing together the world of money and the energy body and the soul's essence. She is a professional speaker, sharing her techniques during interactive workshops and maintains an international private practice. She um, has shared um, the stage with Lisa Nichols, Dr. Joe Vitale and Sharon Lecter and has been featured on Yahoo Finance, Fox News, NBC, Roku TV and the LA Tribune. Her personal heart-centered healing philosophy is to create a world that is a better place for all to live. Welcome, Donna, and thank you so much for joining me today. And thank you so much for having me here with you and your podcast, Rose. It's a pleasure to be here. Wonderful. So tell me a little bit more about the Mind Whisperer. What is exactly do you do to get into people's minds? <laughs> simple question. Let's see if I have a simple answer. <laughs> <laughs> What I've learned throughout the years are some various techniques. I use a meditation technique and because physics says that there's no time or space, we can merge our energy fields together. And it's through that process that I can start talk with somebody and we can start with their conscious thought. And we find the thought behind the thought behind the thought all the way back to the originating thought. And when we do, we're in the deeper part of the subconscious so we can shift and make a change. So here's how it works. Your subconscious records everything from the moment you're born to the moment that you exit this earth. And it's constantly assigning feelings and emotions to those thoughts. The problem is, is we're only aware of that happening 10% of the time. So in the law of attraction, when they say your thoughts create your reality, change your belief, change your thought, change your life, you can change your thought, but if you don't change the energy behind the thought that propels it forward, which is through the law of magnetism, your thought's not gonna go very far. And for us, it's feelings and emotions because we're human. And when we start with the originating event or the feeling and we go back to the beginning, we can understand where the frustration came from, where the stress, worry, pressure came from and what was actually needed in that moment. And then through a technique of mine, um, the medicine woman taught me, you can shift and pivot that energy in the brain, creating a new chemical balance immediately. So that's a little bit about the process of it. So how does it really work? I don't know. I'm told it's magic. <laughs> <laughs> well, it sounds like magic. It sounds magical. So how can it help people? How does it, you know, I guess, uh, yeah, how does it, this process help people? Mm -hmm. 
what it does is it changes everything in your reality. So um, I'll give you an example. Um, I pulled a person up from the audience when I was speaking in Connecticut a couple of years ago and asked him what he wanted to change. And he said, well, I really want to create more income, more money. And he said, not because I'm greedy, but I'm very comfortable where I'm at now providing for my family. We just need a little bit extra. My boys are getting ready to go to college. They have a couple years of high school left. There's things we want to do as a family before they go. So his reason for wanting to create more wealth was a relationship with his family. So I asked him how he felt not having what he had been wanting to create. And he said, I am so frustrated. Everything I do, it doesn't work. So I asked him where he felt that in the body, which ties into the health category. And he said, it's in my gut. I feel it, it's this huge knot. So when we go back to the originating event, it turns out when he was nine, his parents got divorced. Each family was comfortable but the more they were used to having was gone. And it was a really frustrating time for him because he was an only child and his parents pulled on him and kind of played tug of war. So the feeling of frustration got locked to the event, which also created, we're comfortable, but we can't have more. So this uh, subconscious associated that together. When I found out what he needed, he said, that he wanted to feel a sense of accomplishment because he wanted his sons to be proud of him and, and respect him for who he was and what he was able to do. So utilizing the technique, we took out the frustration and brought in the energy of respect and pride in that moment. It happens energetically. And the brain created a new chemical when he felt the respect and the pride um, in the synapse between the two brain neurons. And he felt it instantly in the body. When we reviewed the situation after that happened, he said, I'm just happy riding my bicycle down the street. My parents were still divorced, but the frustration was completely gone. And when I asked him how the stomach, the gut felt, he's like, my knot is gone. And in front of the audience, it really did look like he lost 20 pounds, but it was 20 pounds of energetic weight. Now his boys graduated high school, they're going to college this fall. Guess who created the more without frustration, but through happiness, respect, and pride. And it happened. He didn't change what he was doing. He just gave it a different energy. And when that subconscious energy, it's 90% of who we are, aligns with what you're asking for in the 10% of our consciousness, we get results 100% of the time. Yeah, my friend, she's a, a mindset coach and she totally believes in what you've just explained, that um, we are all energy and that um, if we don't project positive energy, then we will not get positive energy back. So, right. And, you know, the right. vibrations and like everything has a vibration and if you don't vibrate at your highest level, then you will only bring low vibration right. to yourself and, and you won't be able to manifest the things that you desire. Exactly. And when we send, we say think positive thoughts or send out positive energy, that we're only aware of doing that 10% because the mm. other 90% is stuck in the subconscious and it may not be in alignment. So you can think a positive thought all day long, but yet if you feel less than on the inside, you're going to have the universe return to you less than every single time instead of what your positive thought is until that subconscious comes into an alignment. So how do you get your subconscious to get into alignment with what, with your reality? Mm -hmm. Well, it's part of the process and it's starting with what we consciously know. And then we go back through the asking of questions to uncover what really got started and what happened in that deeper subconscious. And then for me, because I'm sharing a space with you, I'm also reading and feeling and experiencing the energy as if you are. And it's through that process that I can see what's going on and we can see what the patterns are because the subconscious is designed to keep you safe 100% of the time. 
But yet often it blocks us um, from having what we want because we're thinking we're keeping ourselves safe. How many times have we been asking for our soulmate and the person to come into our life that we just want the one, yet we know that we want to lose you know, 50 extra pounds, but we don't do it because that's keeping us safe because somebody hurt us in love before. So it's through asking, uncovering, and finding those patterns in the subconscious and those moments where it originated from where it got the lower vibrational energy stuck and shifting it to a higher vibrational energy. And when that happens, then the excess weight falls off, the person comes into the into your life, and then you just move forward, you're not doing anything different. Doing is only 10%, our consciousness. The other 90% is the beingness. So what we're doing is we're working on the beingness of who we are. And it's the fuel, just like the fuel you put in your car to drive your car. If you don't put the right fuel in your car, your car's not going to go very far. That's like your thought. So if that fuel, that energy isn't in alignment with the car, car breaks down mm -hmm. but if you put the right gas in and then you drive the car it can go for miles and miles and that's all we're doing is we're putting the right fuel in the subconscious see we're meant to live in a state of happiness abundance and prosperity um, kindness generosity goodness we're not meant to live in a state of stress worry pressure anxiety um, at all that's not who we are that's not our natural beingness but we get stuck there and a part of it is that collective consciousness too. Mm. So do you do this through like NLP or timeline therapy or hypnosis or meditation? Or I use a meditation technique that I've learned. I don't um, utilize, um, I am certified in a couple of Western healing modalities, but where a lot of the skill set comes from is from a medicine woman that I studied with um, as a natural healer, a Buddhist monk. I lived in an ashram for a year, which is a spiritual living community. I studied with yoga healers and it was through them that they gave me little pieces of how all of this works. And so I put it together in a form and in a structure. Um, I know it sounds a lot like NLP. I've never studied NLP, so I can't tell you, but I have studied the science and the physics. And all I can say is truth is universal. So what, what prompted you to change from being a financial advisor or working in finance to what you're doing now? My goodness. When I was a financial advisor, I was also a managing principal of an investment firm. And I was responsible for $500 million of other people's money. So the stress broke down my body and I couldn't digest food for two years. My marriage ended. And I became financially devastated during a global recession, like a lot of people. And those are the three areas I've learned that clients also want shift and change in health, wealth, and relationships. So what happened for me during that time was when I left the ashram, the spiritual living community, and at the time that I met the medicine woman, I was also in a relationship with another person. We were spiritual partners. We were supposed to help each other grow and evolve. And that person chose to become domestically violent towards me. Oh, so I, I left and I remember praying, meditating, <laughs> keep me safe, keep my children safe. I will become a healer. I'll do whatever is necessary. I'll start my own practice. And faster than I could blink, that's exactly what happened. So today I'm fulfilling that promise. But during that time, it was a four to a five year time period. I was my own first client learning some of these things because I realized that everything had me in common. So I knew something about me needed to shift and change. And when Western medicine couldn't figure out what was wrong with me, I turned to a natural healer. I was a naturopathic doctor who studied Chinese medicine. I had no idea what she did, but it was the introduction to beliefs and who we are and she said you know because you couldn't digest food on the inside there's something in the outside of your life that you couldn't digest either and that was the infidelity of my marriage and the amount of anger I was consuming I didn't know I was consuming anger and that was my first relationship between how we're feeling and how it affects our thinking to the changes and that's where my whole path started.
Oh, wow. That is so interesting. I'm sorry that you had to go through that um, domestic well, violence. So there was, was a before. gift because if that didn't happen, I, we wouldn't be here today. Well, that's <laughs> so there's that, a gift. That, that's <laughs> true. Yes. But, you know, it's, yeah, it's, uh, it's a hard road when you have to go through that sort of um, part of your life. But anyway. <laughs> We it was tough. It was tough, but um, I don't know that I would change it. it. I wouldn't change it. Um, I would just know better. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'm. Um, I'm an advocate against all of those things, and you know, I have um, um, an awareness uh, initiative that you know we held free pamper days for domestic violence survivors. So. Yeah, and. Um, so, and I, so I really feel, um, yeah, when someone has to, goes through it, I feel really, it, it's like it's happening to me. It's, so I don't know whether I'm just an empath or I'm not really sure, but yeah. I don't know. It upsets me. Hmm. Anyway, we get off that. It's not about me. <laughs> <laughs> no, you are very empathic. You have a very, very kind, nurturing, soft heart. Oh, thank you. Yes, I know. It's, I shouldn't have, but I do. <laughs> <laughs> now, getting back to you. Um, so where um, are the places that you speak, you know, and, and who do you help? And, uh -huh. you know, who are your clients? You know, who are they? Yeah. What do they do? So I work a lot with heart-centered business owners. And I say heart-centered because all healing takes place in the heart because it's our feeling center that we have. And when that, in that part of the subconscious comes into alignment with what we're thinking in the mind, we have heart-mind coherence. And when that happens, our throat is the bridge. So when we speak, it comes into existence. So a lot of the healing takes place in the heart, shifting and changing things in that emotional pattern. But also I've learned that there's qualities with heart-centered people that they want the world to be a better place. They're here to be of service. They want to help another person. And by helping themselves, they have the ability to help more people. So I'm always looking for people who are heart-centered, who want to make the changes. Um, the way it works, um, it, it works virtually, um, digitally, or on the telephone. When I'm working with clients, um, I have an international practice of 11 years, and uh, the majority of it is on the phone. And speaking wise, right now, I've been speaking on a lot of digital stages. And then this summer, we're going to be moving to the smaller live stage. And it looks like a West Coast tour. And in the fall, we move to the larger stages of several thousand people. And then next year, we're going to be going on a tour. It's going to be starting in London, I believe. And that is in April. So we'll be doing a European, Africa, U.S., and an Australia tour for the year. Oh, all being well, that is. Yes, yes. Mm. As the venues open, as the countries open, everything, yes. yes. Yeah, everything's so uncertain now. It's just, um, yeah, you make plans and they just fall through because mm -hmm. you can't travel, you can't do this, can't do that. But anyway, it, it is what it is and um, you can't really do much about it. So I guess, um, tell me a bit about your book. Mm -hmm. Financially. Your book, Donna. Yay. Well, so what does that do? What is it about? What, I was discovering patterns working with my clients and coming from the financial industry, there was one big pattern that I saw and clients were starting to say things like, I want to know that I'm worthy and that I felt appreciated or someone valued me when I was little. And I just want to know that I'm enough. And one day, a couple of years ago, it clicks that those were the exact same qualities that we talked about in the financial planning world, except differently. It was, here is your net worth. Your portfolio value is your assets appreciated X, Y, Z. Oh, and do you have enough money to fund this goal? Because if you don't feel like you're enough on the inside, you didn't have enough money to fund the goal on the outside. And I started seeing this pattern that anytime I worked on a client, even if it was something in the area of health, their financial situation always improved. So that taught me that 
the universe returns to you exactly what you're feeling. It doesn't subcategorize categorize or say, oh, it's only this category, you feel this way. It says, no, uh, you don't feel enough. So here, not have enough everywhere in your life. Mm -hmm. And so I put financially fit together because I was talking about how money is an energy form, but it's outside of us. But yet we are also energy and how we think and how we feel affects your money supply because money is emotional and how you're feeling on the deeper surfaces is how money is responding in your life. So I go through a little bit of the process of where did these feelings originate from? Well, a lot of times they come from our parents and grandparents and people who raised us because we learned it energetically. And then how to start looking at clearing that. I talk a little bit about the pivot and shift strategy. The center part of the book is about creating and manifesting in the present moment after we are done clearing the stuff that is holding us from having what we're asking for. And then we end the book with bringing our future into the present moment by writing our own affluent story. And so that's the process that I utilize. So financially fit is the wealth category of the three areas that we work on and the things that sabotage us from having the life that we're asking for. There's an area on relationships. So that book I'm gonna be putting together and writing and it'll come out first quarter of next year and the following year I'll do the health book. And then through the book, there's a program called the Financially Fit Program that if you wanna learn how to do this for yourself, you can. I'll teach you. Careful. So, yeah. That. So I guess, um... We can, um, so are you, the book's on Amazon. Is it available anywhere else? Yes, it's on Amazon. It's on barnesandnoble.com worldwide. And you can also find it on financiallyfitbook.com, which is my website. Mm -hmm. And that's where you can order an autographed copy. Um, or you can order the book straight from there too. Perfect. So yeah. um, you've got um, another website, um, Donna Campbell, and you're on LinkedIn and you on Facebook as well. Yes, yes. So, and you've got those other two books coming up. You've got your speaking tour coming up, well, two of them really, one in the northern um, continent, and then you're going to Europe. So that is so exciting. Yes, I'm excited for that. As a speaker, we love being on the live stages, mm. and um, I can't wait to go back. It's been a couple of years, but I've learned, like a lot of people, how to present and be things, you know, digitally. So it's been, it's been fun learning a new technique and technology and the things that go behind it. Yeah, I think um, a lot of people will be doing hybrid events. Mm -hmm. I think so too. Because you can't, a lot of people won't be able to travel and so they can still beam in, you mm -hmm. know, digitally and, um, and still enjoy your, your um, conversations. Yes, absolutely. Righto. So, is there any wise words that you have before we go today? Oh, um, I'm going to share with you guys a writing that I have that I call a mantra. And this was something that I wrote when I started going through all of those difficult times. But I still say it today. I still share it today. And it's still relevant. And it is trust and you will see. Believe and you will know. Have faith all is well follow your heart and spirit will lead you oh that's beautiful yeah and it's that's very true it is very true if you follow your heart rather than your head you end up usually with good stuff yes all the time every single time <laughs> yeah i know if my stomach's in knots then i don't go there i, I it has to be um nice and calm and <laughs> Anyway, Donna, thank you so much for joining me and sharing your wisdom with us today. It was um, absolutely eye-opening and heart-opening. It was lovely. Thank you for having uh, me. I appreciate your time. Thank you so much. Mm, thank you.